Hello internet, welcome back to our tutorial series. In the last episode, we talked about the food system in Cataclysm, the hunger system and the calorie storage system. I feel like I left some things out, but hopefully that that, that is still good enough to stand on its own. It certainly was a basic overview. Uh, I want to mention something right up front that I keep forgetting to mention in the early parts of the episode. I did mention it at the end of one, but people don't usually, you know, watch the end of episodes. So there is a, you know, Cataclysm is a game that is a roguelike. It's permadeath, right? There's one life when you die. That's the end of the game. I just wanted to touch on saving a little bit. You can save two ways that I'm aware of. The first is to hit the escape menu and press zero. You'll see down here that is a quick save. That is what I do 90% of the time. So if you ever see this pop up and, and save pop up, that's because I hit escape zero. Um, and it's not giving us a message because we haven't done anything since the last time I saved. The other way to save is to hit the capital S key and it will prompt you to save and quit, which will take you back to the main menu. We're not going to do that right now. But I keep meaning to mention that in the early parts of the video because, you know, some people don't know about quick save and it's super, super handy. Um, alternatively, you can set up a save auto save in the somewhere in the menus. I don't actually use that because there are times when auto saving will um, cause some issues. In fact, here it is in general auto save and you can set how often it saves. So that's something to keep an eye on. I don't like doing that in case I lose footage and I have to go back to um, to the start, like say I start this episode, we record 20 minutes and then it corrupts. I don't want my last save to be two minutes from the end of the video. I want my last save to be the very beginning of the video so that I can return to that point to, to re-record if, if I crash or something. So that's up to you. Uh, obviously as a content creator that my priorities are a little different than yours. Anyway, uh, so we've secured our shelter by collecting all the items We've secured a very basic weapon. We've looked, we have food, we have some beverages, and we have access to dirty water, which we can clean to increase the amount of beverages we have. That's all stuff that we don't need to concern ourselves with right this moment. The main thing, so we're currently at 826 AM in the game. It's a little early to be venturing out. Uh, you will want to raid at night primarily as a new player. Uh, so we're not going to be doing that. What I thought we could do is talk a little bit about the crafting menu because there are things that we're going to want. We're going to want better storage, which is stuff we could potentially craft, probably are not going to be able to do, but potentially. And uh, we're going to want to secure a better weapon because the plank is uh, an emergency weapon. A plank is not something you want to be going into combat with. We just picked this up so that if anything came bursting into the shelter, we weren't trying to bare knuckle box it. We actually had something in our hands. So I would like to look into securing a better weapon and I would like to look into possible storage items. And so, oh, and we can take off our jacket that we put on in a previous episode. We picked this up just for storage and we can go ahead and take that off. You'll see we're wearing a winter coat and an emergency jacket, which is not optimal. So we can do that by pressing the capital T key and it will prompt us to take it off. Alternatively, you can um, use your inventory menu, go to that item and go down here to take off, but it's much quicker to, to just use the capital T menu by default. And we'll go ahead and drop that as well. We also don't need this ration in our inventory. So in this episode, we're gonna talk about the crafting menu and how that works. Now, crafting usually requires many components uh, and certain tools and things like that. But the one thing that it almost always requires is light. So we could potentially open a window to get access or door to get access to light. I'm trying to hold off on that as much as possible. I don't wanna show you the outside world until we have a pretty basic understanding of what we're doing. Um, I guess we do already, and we are surrounded by forests. So the main issue with opening a door or window, depending on where your evac shelter starts, you know, sometimes they can spawn right next to a town. Obviously we would not wanna open a window that faces a house or whatever the building might be because that could potentially open us up to being visible to lots of enemies. In the forest, there are fewer enemies to be concerned about. We're not gonna worry about zombies seeing us. There are animals in the forest, um, but most of them, I don't see dangerous animals that frequently. They definitely exist and it's definitely a possibility, but for the most part, I would not feel bad opening. So if I were to open a window at the moment, I would open a south facing door or window because we would be primarily exposed to the road, which likely has no one on it. 
For now, we're going to hold off on that. We're just going to talk about the crafting menu. Now, crafting in Cataclysm is accessed by using the ampersand symbol by default. This is the symbol over the 7 key on the average keyboard. So we're going to hit Shift and 7, and it will open our crafting menu. There are many ways. The, the crafting menu is very is something you're going to use a lot and it's important that you learn all the functionality of it. We're going to give you a basic overview and then we're going to talk about some specifics. So when you open the crafting menu, it will bring you to this asterisk tab. This is where your favorite recipes will pop up. So most of the time when you're starting the game, or I guess always, this will be blank. I don't know if favoriting uh, recipes actually carries over between characters. I never ever favorite recipes because I just don't care i usually search for them uh you'll see at the top everything is separated into categories if you hit the tab key you will tab between those tabs shift tab will back you up i prefer binding them to the greater than and less than symbols which you can do you'll have to do manually i don't believe that's the default anymore but that is how i generally navigate with the greater than and less than then in each tab, there are subcategories you can tab between these by using the left and right arrow keys or the four and six key on your deep on your um, numpad. And you'll see everything's broken down into categories. So if we were looking for a better weapon, which is something I just talked about as being an interest of ours, we would come into weapon. And if you say during character creation, you gave your character lots of bashing weapon skill, you would want to focus in on bashing. So you would go over to the bashing tab and it displays a list of recipes. So recipes by default are sorted by the level of the skill that is required to craft them. Uh, first, you'll see items listed in white. This will be the items you have the materials for, and this supersedes that. So let's say that we're level two fabrication. Uh, everything in white will be stuff we have access to. They'll be listed in order based on fab level. Then everything grayed out will be a separate list of everything by fab level that we don't have a recipe for, or we don't have materials for. So it's possible for us to get a level one fab recipe at the top and then a level two fab recipe at the top of the grayed out area. So they are sorted first by component or components that are accessible and then by skill level. Okay, does that make, hopefully that makes sense. So you'll see we don't have very much available to us, um, but this again is just stuff that we have access to. The other important thing to note is that this is not all recipes in the game. Currently our weapon recipes uh, are pretty limited. We have, I don't know, 20-ish recipes here. As we level up our skills, we will get access to more and more recipes. Additionally, some recipes are locked into books, which means we need to find a specific book in order to have access to a specific recipe. So for instance, um, some of the high quality, there's a book uh, about uh, Japanese sword making, I believe, and that gives you recipes for Japanese swords that are not obtainable anywhere else in the game. You won't automatically learn them. And that's how recipes are learned. Either you auto learn them at a certain skill level or you learn them from a specific book. So let's look at the tabs. Uh, the tabs are broken down weapon, ammo, food, chemistry items, electronics, armor, other, and animals. This can be a little complicated to navigate if you're not super familiar. Chemicals includes mutagen and um, medications, which are listed as drugs in this menu. Um, here we only literally have drugs, but in the future as we unlock, um, say we learn to make aspirin, that will be listed in the drugs category as well. The armor tab includes um, non-armor items. So armor in Cataclysm refers to clothing and armor. So you'll see the first things here are, are include a t-shirt. A t-shirt is obviously not very armory, um, but it is clothing and it does have protection values that determine, that make it armor essentially. So that's something to look out for. Everything else is more or less self-explanatory. The food tab is broken down into neat categories that can be helpful. Um, and I don't often craft my own ammunition, but here it is if that's something you're interested in. So uh, the other thing of note is that certain modifications appear certain places. So like here we, in the uh, weapons menu, we have a tab for mods that apply, that, that's gun mods uh, specifically. And if we go over to other, I believe is where vehicle parts are, you'll see this is kind of a catch-all. Oh, I'm sorry, medical 
is where medication will appear, I guess. Not not in chem and drugs. Could have swore that they were in the same tab, but that's okay. Uh, but you'll see this is kind of a catch-all here. We have some tools. We have uh, vehicle parts. We have traps that we can build. All kinds of stuff is, is just thrown into the other category. Animals uh, specifically deals with, I mean, animals. It's not something I play with very often. Looks like it's specifically dog and horse armor as well as uh, saddlebags for horses. Okay, so we know what the crafting menu is and we know how to find something uh, manually in here. Um, how do I look for something specific? Well, in Cataclysm and in pretty much every aspect of Cataclysm, you can search whatever menu you're looking at. doesn't really matter what it is. You know, we talked uh, before about the eat menu. You can search in the eat menu for a specific thing. Um, you can search in a crafting menu for something specific. You can search uh, all kinds of menus, and it's always pretty much the same key. So in the crafting menu, if we hit the forward slash key, which is the uh, slash that's underneath your question mark, so just a lowercase question mark, basically, uh, you will bring up this menu, which allows us to type. So let's say we're looking for, um, I don't know, a uh, shirt. It will pop up everything that has the word shirt in the entry. Now, this will only search recipes that you currently have access to. So there are more shirts in the game. We just don't have the recipes for them at the moment. And if we hit slash again and bring this menu back up, you'll see that there's a lot of other stuff we can search for. It's honestly it's self-explanatory if you read these things um so we can search for the name of an item which is oh literally what we just did search for shirt additionally we can search for the quality of a resulting item so if we're looking for something with a screw driving ability i could type q colon screw and you'll see it brings up everything that has a quality of screw driving uh so apparently just these two objects next we have d colon and in D colon, it searches the description of the item. And this is a slow function because it has to search through very, very many items. Um, so if we look for like, I don't know, Riot, it'll bring up T-shirt uh, because it has uh, Riot. It can craft the Rioter's Mask and you'll see it also brought up the Rioter's Mask. Those I don't use very often. The one I use probably the most, uh, no, well, C is important too. So C colon will search by a component required to craft it. So if you're saying, okay, well, I, I fished and I'm looking for anything that can use a fish fillet or whatever, you can go C colon fish and it will bring up everything that uses fish in the recipe and you'll see it even highlights the, the item connected to that. Next, we can use P colon. This searches by primary skill. So let's say I'm trying to raise my fabrication skill, which we saw before. I can type P fab and it will look for every fab recipe in order of it's the same order as before sorted first by components that you have and then sorted by recipes you can't currently craft and by level so that's a very handy one that i use very often s colon searches any skill used to craft it this is not something i think that i have ever used so here it uses s cooking as a recipe uh this means that we could find something that even though its primary skill is not cooking, it might have it under other skills, so it would pop up there. Next, we have capital Q colon. This shows a quality required to craft the item. We haven't really talked about tool qualities yet, but we did search for screw driving earlier. So let's do that again. And currently, we don't have any recipes that require screw driving, which seems suspicious and makes me think I did it wrong. Next, we have two T colon, uh, lowercase T colon, which searches for a specific tool. So if we search T hammer, really nothing requires a hammer because it would require a tool quality. A hammer is not something that is generally required. So if we search for T colon mess for a mess kit, you'll see it pops up everything that would require the mess kit for cooking. Uh, and then finally we have M yes or no, which shows whether or not a recipe, like let's, so if we have book recipes, you don't instantly learn all those recipes. You have to be near the book to use it. But the more you craft that item, the more likely you are to memorize the recipe and then you won't need the book anymore. So we can say, okay, well, we're looking for ones that are specifically from books that we have not memorized. We could search that way. And so I know that that's uh, a little complicated and a little bit long-winded, but that is the best way to use the crafting menu is to first manually search. If you know specifically what you're searching for, just type it in. You know, we're looking for clean water. 
So we'll type water and there's clean water listed. The next thing I use the most is P colon, which searches primary skills, which we talked about uh, because it's easy to grind skills at the moment in Cataclysm. And it's often very important to grind skills in Cataclysm. Uh, and then the next one I use is probably component where I'm looking for a specific, hey, what all can I make with my meat? Well, here's a big list of things that require meat. So those are the ones I use the most, um, but they are all available and you can see there is a brief description of what it does here. Once again, really want to stress reading in Cataclysm is very important. I can't tell you how long I played. Uh, I saw this menu all the time. Every time I searched something, this menu popped up and I didn't even really read it until like a year ago. Um, and finally started using it and it has made my life a lot easier. So really, really focus in on what these do when you're, when you're trying to do something specific. So we are interested in crafting a better weapon. We don't have a lot of tools available to us, um, but we can look at our recipes. We'll go to weapons, tab over to weapons, because I don't have a specific thing in mind. And let's look at what we have available. Well, we have the cudgel, which is a more appropriate weapon than just a plank, pointy stick, slingshot. Mm, none of these things jump out at me right away as super valuable. Some things are going to be beyond our capability. Like uh, the barbed wire bat requires barbed wire and a baseball bat. And we don't have either of those. And we're not likely to find either of those very easily. Some of these can be removed from the conversation because they're just a little bit silly for the moment. Like the 710 split that requires a bowling pin or the standalone freaking grenade launcher is not really what we're looking for. We're looking for melee weapons. Um, so just from my personal experience, I would say that the cudgel probably is the best thing we're going to be able to make. You see, we could probably make the nail board 10 piers. So oh, we should talk about weapons information. That should really be a different episode, though. Yeah, I think we'll call this episode, and in the next episode, we'll talk about weapon qualities and what you should be looking for in a weapon at the start of the game, what makes some things better than others, and uh, yeah, that, that really deserves its own episode. So that's the, the crafting menu. When you select something in the crafting menu, uh, you just select it and press enter, and your character will begin to craft it. Um, let's make something, what can we make easily that I can demonstrate this with? Uh, okay. We'll come over here to the splintered wood. Uh, and we'll use the component search for splinter and we'll pop up. Okay. So we can make a wooden bead. So here is the other information that I should have relayed to you. Um, the crafting menu, it specifically tells you what skill is going to be used for crafting that. So because we're zero of zero, we will get experience in fabrication for crafting this item. And it could potentially level us up if we craft enough of them. Other skills required, it doesn't require any other skills. The time to complete is 20 minutes. It will take us 20 minutes to make a wooden bead. Batch time savings, what this means is that you can craft more than one of these items at a time and it will potentially give you less time per item. So if you press the B key, lowercase b, it will bring, bring up the batch craft menu and you'll see we can craft up to 20 of these items at a time, which of course will require more components. And you'll see, let's say we make six of these items, it will take us two hours and that's because there's no batch time savings. So each one of these will take 20 minutes no matter how many we're crafting. Other things, if we search for, let's say we're making what? Okay, go away batch crafting menu. Let's say we're making uh, meat, we're cooking meat. Uh, you'll see it's uh, 15 minutes per item, but you'll see it has a batch time saving. So at greater than five units, if we craft more than five, it will actually be a reduced amount of time per item. So instead of being a flat, uh, what, what was it? 15 minutes, so this should be half an hour, but you'll see it actually drops to 24 minutes. This should be an hour, but it's not. This should be two hours, and you'll see it's actually a reduction in that amount of time because we're batch crafting those items. The next thing listed is dark craftable. This determines if you need light to craft this item or not. Most of the time, this will be listed as impossible, which means you need light in order to craft. Certain things can be made in the dark and certain things require, um, I, I don't think 
there are variants on what level of light is required, but mostly it's it's either a yes or no question. Is, is it dark? Is it not dark? Craftable. So we could not cook meat in the dark. Next, we have the list of tools required. This will tell you everything that you need in order to craft this. So we need a tool with food cooking of one or more, which we have because I believe splintered wood counts as a in, an item with food cooking. And you'll see that in the list of items uh, in the items description, it will say if it has the food cooking quality or not. Secondarily, we need a source of fire. And so this is just a big list of all the things you could use to cook this. The main one you'll be using the most is, should say nearby fire right here, nearby fire. So basically 99% of the time when you're cooking, you're going to be just starting a fire somewhere. There are, as you progress in the game, you'll start using electric stoves and things like that. But for the most part, you'll be using nearby fire. This is just a big list of all the items that could be used to cook this. And then at the bottom, it says the components required, and it would require eight chunks of meat to make eight cooked meat. And you'll see as we go up or down in the batch crafting menu, it, it changes these values because it requires less material. So cooking four meat instead of eight only requires four chunks of meat and fewer charges from a, like an electric cooker or whatever. So there's the main pop-up things that will appear in the crafting menu. Let's take a look at um, just something with a food crafting, food cooking quality. We could do this by hitting the slash key and going to uh, lowercase q colon food. And it will pop up everything that we could craft with food cooking just in case we didn't already have an item. You'll see the pointy stick when we look at the description. It says it has a level one food cooking quality. Different level skills will be required for different level things. So if we go to quality hammer, you'll see the makeshift hammer has two hammering ability, whereas a stone hammer has a one hammering ability. I'm sorry, that's the uh, sharpened rebar, has one hammering ability. And so different levels of tools are required for different level things. Some crafting, let's say we're making um, a nail bat, right? We're just hammering some nails into a bat. I'm not 100% what that actually requires, but I'm guessing it's the lowest uh, hammering. You'll see it requires hammering of one or more, but if we're trying to make something a little bit more advanced, uh, which we, I don't, I can't think of anything off the top of my head that would require higher hammering. We can go um, requires hammering. Uh, what requires hammering too that we can use? Here we go. A screwdriver, however, would not work with a tool with only one hammering. It requires a tool with hammering of two or more. Um, and so that's the basic rundown, I think. Uh, you'll see there are additional options available at the bottom of the screen. I don't know that I've ever used any of these. The only thing that's really worth noting is the hiding of recipes. So let's say we're on this menu uh, and we're looking for something that we know exists and that we have the recipe for but we can't actually find it odds are good you bumped the show hide recipe thing that comes up from time to time people don't understand where it went so if we hit s it will hide that recipe it will remove it from this list and the way we get that back is to go to that very first tab that is the asterisk and go over to hidden and you'll see it, the hidden recipes appear here and we can just hit s again and it will restore it to its original position Next, we have some other little functions, again, that I don't particularly use. I never favorite things. Um, if you favorite things, they will pop up every time you open the crafting menu. It will take you right to the favorites tab, so it's right there. Um, I just don't really use that particular function because it's just as quick for me to hit slash and type, you know, um, cooked meat, and boom, I'm there. I didn't have to favorite it and scroll down a list. I just instantly am there. So that's my preference, but... And I don't think there's anything else really of note on the right hand side, of course, it displays the, the end item that you're crafting. So cooked meat, uh, this tells us everything we need to know about the cooked meat, uh, which is great, you know, and we'll talk more about those type of item descriptions as we proceed. We're about to do that in the next episode with weapons, I think. So for now, uh, can't think of anything else that's necessary to discuss here. So I think that's going to be it for this particular episode in the next episode we'll talk about what weapons are and why they're important and really like how to determine what's a good weapon and what's not a good weapon and then we will be crafting ourselves a, a better weapon than the plank so for now that's going to do it thank you for watching hopefully you enjoyed the episode i'll be back with more of the tutorial cataclysm playthrough 
in the near future, uh, and I'll see you next time.